Hey there, Joshua Hanlon here at Atlanta Brickco, and today I'm joined by Chris to take a look at some of the rarest and most unique sets that they have available at the store today. Now, obviously, things come and go a lot from the store here, so this is just what currently kind of makes up their top 10 rarest and most unique sets. So what is this first one we have on the table here, Chris? This is one of the older space sets. It's from uh, 1996. I was in high school when that came out. Um, it's not super rare. Um, what's rare is to get it in the box like this. And what's also rare about it is the how cool the blister pack mm -hmm. is. Uh, they just don't make Lego boxes like that anymore. Um, for good reason. I mean, this would get destroyed on a Walmart shelf. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You'd see the minifigure missing out of it and everything like that. So to find this sealed in its original box in good condition is relatively rare. So that's why this one is making the list. Uh, this is the Explorians. I don't think it was a super popular space theme, you know? It's not classic. It's not uh, Space Police. Um, you know, it's no Blacktron. Right, Mtron. It's, like, yeah. it's one of probably one of the least popular space uh, themes. In fact, I don't even think they had aliens in this set. How do you have a space? <laughs> right. How do you have a space theme without aliens? So it's not super expensive. It's called the Scorpion Detector. So I guess they're just out looking for the little Lego scorpions. <laughs> I don't know. But there's no scorpions in it. But one one thing that's interesting about this, I feel like in the 90s, this type of packaging was a lot more common, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the hologram on the front there. Uh, you, you put a, holograms on something, you could immediately sell it, get more <laughs> money for it. So not a real popular set, uh, not super expensive for what you're getting. It's $120. Uh, but it is uh, probably going to go up in value. It's nostalgic, and it's, it's Lego. That's all that matters, mm -hmm. <laughs> is that it's Lego. So uh, I personally like this a lot. That's why I chose it to be one of the more uh, rare sets. And I would imagine there's maybe a correlation, we'll see if, if this plays out as we go through, between something not being real popular and being rarer later in its life because there weren't mm -hmm. a lot of people that bought them. Correct, yeah. And that's another thing that makes something rare is they just didn't make very many mm -hmm. because it was not popular. So, um, and just because something's rare doesn't make it expensive. That's There's got to be a demand for it. So, how much is this one? That one's one hundred and twenty dollars. There yeah. we go. Now, if that was a Star Wars set, which they weren't making Star Wars sets at this time, if that was any of the Star Wars sets from that time period, it would be ten times that probably. <laughs> So it's space, but not Star Wars, so it doesn't yeah. count. <laughs> yeah. So that's number, uh, number ten. 10 yeah. Here we go. This is a little bit bigger box. Yeah, this is the Vikings line. I don't think they made a lot of these sets. They did not. It was really just one way. Mm -hmm. as, as someone who was like the perfect Lego age when this theme came out, I mm -hmm. was very disappointed because I think I collected. I think every set from this theme. Uh, I love the Vikings. I mean, it's a Danish company. You gotta love the Vikings. Oh, yeah. And then the fort, the fact that there was like an actual military type fort and all the Viking soldiers with their cool shields, the weapons. I mean, a, a double sided axe. What, how cool is that? Yeah. Uh, the shields are my favorite thing. You got both shields in this one. These are the, the bigger ones were the printed shields, and then you got the smaller ones, the, the Technic disc that had the sticker mm -hmm. on it. But I just, I love Viking shields. I think they're really cool. Um, the uh, wooden palisades here are just awesome. And then you get two dragons in this. You get the big dark green dragon. And then I think you get a little. There white, was a smaller one. Can you see? Oh, black. yeah, you can see it right here on the front. And it's inside the fort. Yeah, that smaller black dragon in there. And that black dragon had these little half bushings that it came with. Uh, like it really needed to have these little half bushings because. <laughs> Those half bushings are super common in light gray and light bluish gray, but they only came in black in this set. And that dragon is quite often missing because it's not actually part of the fort, it's a dragon. So we've, we have two of these sets right now, both missing the black bushings. That's all we need to complete. So them. a complete one of these would be very rare then. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this is in the... I want to say the $600 ballpark, which is a, quite a bit of money for a, a set, a thousand piece. Right. Set. 
Um, but the uh, the rock up there is that speckled uh, gray or something. Chrome like that. almost yeah. idea, yeah. A lot of really cool parts. The wings are marbled uh, green and red. Uh, but those bushings, if you've got some out there and uh, you want to sell us some, <laughs> we'd be willing to buy them. But on Bricklink, they're like twelve dollars each right now, and I just can't. I just can't bring myself to, to pay that. So, but yeah, only a, only a thousand pieces. But there was so much playability in this set. So you've got yeah. multiple, like three catapults here. The great big catapult. You had the doors that opened. You could rearrange the the, the fort walls, the palisade walls, in different ways. And then, then obviously the big monsters attacking mm -hmm. and stuff. So I, these Viking sets were so incredible. Oh, yeah, and the box has the flap. Yeah, and I don't know, John, if you can show this up here, but I loved growing up this art on the top that showed like all the Viking <clears> sets <throat> laid out as if it was <clears throat> like a, a Viking, you know, village, and then it, you had like the fjord idea almost with the, the snow and ice and the, the long ships and everything. Oh, this theme was so incredible, and I can't believe, being a Danish company, we haven't gotten more Viking sets. I, I have heard rumors, I don't know if you've heard the rumors, but there is rumors of a creator Viking, Viking set, potentially. And uh, one last thing I do want to mention about this set, which is super cool, is they use Bionicle parts. Mm -hmm. Not many Legos, Lego system sets use Bionicle parts. And they, they, in this day and age, they were using them in this, uh, these castle sets. So that's pretty cool. I love it. I'm glad you included this one. Any excuse yep. to show Vikings is great. <laughs> Do you still have your Vikings? Oh, yes. Yeah, I've got the longship. I've got the fort. A lot of them aren't necessarily put together, but I've still mm -hmm. got them all. Yeah. Yeah, the longship was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love Viking ships with the shields on the side. One of the first things I built out of Lego as an adult. So cool. Next up, we, we go back to space. Yeah, so this is modern real space. Uh, this this is something that actually exists. Star uh, Wars isn't real, Chris. I didn't say Star Wars wasn't real. Okay, that's I good. never said that. I didn't say that. Carry on. No, it's very real, actually. If you Google Star Wars, it's it exists. All right, so uh, this is the lunar lander, actually, isn't it? Which we've gotten other like other iterations the, of this more yeah. recently, right? Yeah. The new lunar lander, but what it, what makes this so rare is it's uh, it's a licensed product from the Discovery Channel, um, based on an actual uh, lunar lander, which I feel terrible that I don't know that, but I'm, I just don't. I'm not into that. So uh, it is. Uh, these say NASA on their uh, torsos. And those torsos are worth, the figures are worth like $80 each, just for a normal space, normal looking space guy. So uh, this has a lot of rare pieces in it. See that cockpit mm -hmm. there? That's in light gray. Is it light gray or light bluish gray? Uh, light gray. And then the uh, flag here with the, uh, the American flag, the stickers are very unique to this set. There's some other pieces that only came in this set. So this actually took us a lot of ordering on BrickLink in order to complete it. Uh, we thought we had it all complete and we could, we could inventory it, but we had to order a lot. Um, it's got chrome, silver pieces in it. And then this one here has an unused sticker sheet, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And that's the American flag. Who doesn't want American flags? And this was what, like a Discovery Channel partnership? Discovery got Channel it on there? set, yeah. Um, a lot of sets today you're seeing like friend sets are actually uh, National Geographic yeah. and some of the underwater sets are National Geographic so it's very similar to that. Uh, this is $250 which is a lot of money for <laughs> a set this size but it is just so rare. Like I said, those minifigures, they've got the uh, those backpacks or the odd Arctic backpacks. Oh, but those we, white. yeah. That was only, a strange mold, yeah. Only came in this set, yeah. So that is a super rare set. Next up is a uh, little, little bit bigger, kind of unusual one here. Yeah, we got these in a collection. This is brand new sealed, never opened. Um, it's got, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a lot of dust on it. <laughs> so you know it's authentic. <laughs> yes. uh, no, be, it, this has a lot of dust on it because it's been on our shelf for at least a year. Um, it, it's a rare set and it's expensive, but who wants it? You know, there's, it's not that cool, you know? The only thing cool about it is the gold brick. It's got gold 2x4 bricks in it that are very, very expensive. They only came in this set. 
Um, this was made in Denmark, not all those other countries. Just made in Denmark, it's a limited edition, and it is $250. It is a very rare, exclusive set, and we have three of them brand new sealed, and we've never sold them. So that tells me 250 might be on the high side, but we'll never see another one of these again sealed, probably. So yeah. I think LEGO came out with this for their 50th anniversary. One thing I love is the the little thing advertising free admission to Legoland California <laughs> over there on the side yeah. as well. I mean, it like came with a ticket to Legoland. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of the Lego clubs do that as well. Promotional stuff. It makes you wonder if you can still use them or not. <laughs> you walk in there like, I bought the golden brick, now I want it. Yeah. <laughs> Those golden bricks are really popular, and I think Lego Masters has kind of made them oh that's because, true uh, everybody wants the golden brick there you go up next not a golden brick but very you know, unique we, we kind of lumped in uh, these educational sets together uh, it's you know we've got dacta here which is their older educational sets i think these were from the 90s uh, and you had to be an educator in order to get these sets okay. so not anyone could get them uh, this is from 1993 um, and very technic inspired, as you can see, these pieces here yeah, are all very technic. It's got the old nine volt system motors in it. Oh, spilling out here. And it has a lot of extra paperwork that tells you uh, all the things you could do with it. Um, they're not, it's not super exciting, um, but they are expensive because they're rare. They didn't make a lot of them, and Lego sells their educational stuff for what seems like a lot more money, maybe three times the price, because they're educational. So uh, maybe because they don't make as many or they put rare parts in them or something, I don't know. But uh, this this is a relatively rare set. I just noticed something interesting with the box here and the packaging. So you've got like real life examples of the build. So like this is a dinosaur, in case you don't know what a dinosaur is. <laughs> yeah. then you might not, and I'm like here it's a, like a fairground ride next to the, the Lego version of it. I don't think I've ever really seen that on a Lego box. Yeah, that, that is <laughs> an interesting observation. Um, you know, these aren't like, there's not a lot of wow factor here. Oh, I think we here. lost the piece. There we go. And I think this educational set here is the same way. This is super rare. It's the Panama Canal. Um, I have never seen this before. I got it in the collection that I just bought, this massive haul we went down to Florida to pick up in a big tractor trailer. Um, this was the, this was $400, which, how many pieces are in there? Uh, 1100, yeah, about 1,200 pieces, so $400 is, seems kind of on the high side. Uh, but again, it's a Lego educational set. And the only thing I'm seeing exclusive in it is like, either a sticker or a uh, printed part that says Canal de Panama. Mm -hmm. And what's n what is neat about it is you you said you have this set, right? Yes. Yeah, so John and I, longtime viewers of Beyond the Brick, <clears throat> might remember several years ago we went to a Lego show in Panama. There was a convention there, did a bunch of videos, and then had a chance to visit the Panama Canal and see the ships go through. And then one of the people from the show actually gave us this set when we were there. And I really like it because it's an education set. So as the name implies, it is very educational. If you build this and then it, lots of functionality throughout here, you move the locks up and down and it functions just like the Panama Canal actually functions. And it's a variety of container ships here. There's sort of like a cruise ship. So it's the different types of ships represented that go through the Panama Canal. So I think they captured what they were going for really well. It was an expensive set though. I bet, yeah. It's uh, anytime you put the word stem on something, <laughs> just you, can get, right. you could get more money for it. <laughs> so there you go. So education is one of those interesting sort of sub Lego themes that mm. they've done stuff with a lot over the years, but a lot of your, your casual Lego fans aren't necessarily aware of everything they've their, done. Their target market isn't us. It's not kids. It's teachers. Mm -hmm. You know. So that's that's who they're they're targeting. So uh, this one here is really rare. This is. Uh, is that part of the model, model team? It's the uh, Boeing Dreamliner 787. 787. And you don't see this in the box very often. Um, it is a licensed product from Boeing. 
and it's from 2006. And it's very similar to a UCS set. It's got the placard. Very... And that it has that UCS placard mm -hmm. on it. But I, I would say that um, they wouldn't call this a UCS set. Uh, this, the packaging actually looks a lot more like the modular boxes did, the older ones, like uh, the Green Grocer mm -hmm. and the Cafe Corner. And this is a big set, very big. It's got a lot of white in it. So the white in this set will discolor very easy because it's one of the older ones. Uh, so if you can get one of these where it's not all discolored, the value goes up. Uh, it also has rare stickers in it that are exclusive to this set. If you can get those stickers that are in good condition, the value goes up. This set here is complete. The bricks are all in fantastic condition. It's a certified pre-owned set, which means we've gone through and made sure everything's like new in it. The one problem with this set is the stickers are not great, and we've made a note of that on the price tag. We usually will not sell LEGO sets if the stickers aren't good, uh, but this is such a rare set that we're going to make that exception. Somebody wants it either way. Yeah. yeah. And actually, the way that the stickers are, it's, it's a plane, so it kind of looks like it's been weathered a little bit, <laughs> so it's... Realistic. Passable for some people. So one thing that's interesting, I noticed there's no piece count on the front of this, and I don't know if that's just this set or it might be. I think the European versions mm -hmm. of sets don't have the piece count. So from what I understand, the European uh, Lego sets don't have the piece count uh, because they don't have to. Where in the U.S., it's a law that they have to. I, that sounds yeah. right. I think I've heard that. So you, in fact, when during this past pandemic, uh, there was a shortage, uh, a, a lot of logistical problems. A lot of the Lego sets in the United States had the piece count on a sticker because they were the European version of the sets. Oh, I don't know if you noticed no, that. I didn't. Star Wars sets, all the common sets you would get at Walmart and Target had that sticker on it. It was pretty, pretty interesting. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> Lots of shipping shortages. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. We're moving to a little bit smaller now here, but very interesting. Yeah, and this one, I really did not like this set at all. This was the Brazil uh, Olympics. Uh, what year was that? 2016, I think it was 2016, there. okay. Um, it is Vinicius and, does that say Tom? Yep, Tom. Tom. And it does have a rare uh, part in it, that uh, stem, flower stem, multi-flower stem. But really the only exclusive things in it are the stickers that say Rio 2016 with the Olympic logo and then their faces. And those are just stickered faces. Um, you could only buy this in Brazil and maybe neighboring countries. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a customer that was in Brazil and he shipped us a whole bunch of them. And we were like, oh man, oh, we're gonna do really well selling these. And we might have sold a couple. I think we got <laughs> like a dozen of them and we still have them since 2016. And They're so off the wall. It looks like something from like Mario Odyssey or a Nintendo game or something exactly, like that. Yeah. They're just so crazy. <laughs> they were very odd Olympic uh, mascots and um, it, people just don't want it. <laughs> they don't care too much about it. It does have a, uh, a cool hologram on it <laughs> <You know? laughs> that says Rio 2016. <laughs> And it's got the v, uh, Visa sponsorship. And from what I understood, you could just buy these all over the place in Brazil. All the shops had them. And so there's a uh, price tag from one of the shops, and it's in Spanish and all that. Hmm. Um, but these really didn't appreciate in value much, but they're rare. Yeah, no, that's true. Yep. It's still something unique and different. Like, you know, price does not always correlate to rarity. Yeah, yeah, just not a whole lot of demand for those. This here, it's a, I guess it kind of breaks the rules a little bit. It's not an official Lego set, but it is a Brick World set that uh, you were probably at this Brick World. This we is, were, yes. Was it 2013? 20... I think it said 2011. I don't know. Uh, is there no year on there? That's I'm weird. Not, I'm not seeing it, yeah. Um, it wasn't 2011 because we weren't at that one, so it had to have been okay. more recent than that. 2013 um, probably. Yeah, again. I feel like it was 2013. Uh, but yeah, for a lot of people who aren't, who aren't familiar with, if you haven't been to a convention, many LEGO conventions, uh, Brick World, Brick Fair, a lot of the shows will have an event kit, and it's usually designed by an AFOL who goes to that show, and they've designed it ex just for that show. Usually they're kind of exclusive, so there were only 150 of these made. You can see it's numbered there. 
And in this case, there was uh, printing done by Eclipse Graphics, who has done fantastic work, mm -hmm. if you aren't familiar with them. Uh, so they, they, I've actually built this. It's in our studio at home. There's really cool printing for like ice cream flavors and menus and stuff like that in the set. And what makes it so rare is that, I mean, this really could be one of the rarest sets we have here because there's only 150 yeah. made. I mean, that's even though no one is going searching the internet for this set, so there's not a lot of demand for it, it's rare. <laughs> so uh, it does have the Brickworld usually does a really cool cartoon, and that is a really good mm -hmm. one. I mean, yeah, there's so. a theme every year, so that's there's some kind of print uh, around the theme every year. Yeah, so this is number 11 out of 150. It was in our case like it was for sale, but we don't have a price tag on it. This is one of those things that would be really hard to price. Um, I think maybe $100 would, $100, $150 would be about right on it. Um, I doubt you're going to find it on the internet to really get a good price comparison. But Let's see, does it have the, uh, <clears throat> oh, there's the year, yeah, so it says BW 2014 on the, like, 2014, the front okay. of it there, yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, over a thousand exhibitors go, uh, probably 10,000 public go to it, so for only 150 to be made, not everybody got one that went to it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember what yours is? I don't know. I haven't. I haven't looked at the box in a while. So. <laughs> That's number eleven. It's pretty early. There you go. Early run. <laughs> but yeah, event kits are super cool. If if anyone watching out there, if you go to a convention, definitely. Usually when you register, there's the option to get the event kit. Some conventions will automatically include it. That's pretty rare. But usually you can pay extra if you register before a certain deadline and get the event kit and definitely do it. It's a great memory and usually a, a really cool little build that's been designed by a pretty talented builder. Yeah. And, you know, another thing that's neat about this is, if you, is you've got three names attached to it. You've got the designer's name, Brickworld, and Eclipse Graphics. Yeah. Which are, you know, all three popular names in the Lego industry. Um, got some more fun stuff down here? Yeah, this, I love this one. This is so cool, and I know me and a lot of other people wish they would do this again. These are one-by-one one white bricks with letters printed on them. And it's, I'm assuming this is the whole alphabet, but it's hard to tell. Uh, it's got numbers in there. It has accented letters for other yeah. languages. And some of these were etched back in the day. They etched them in, but these here are printed in in blue. Actually, those are etched in. Are they really? Those, okay. those are etched into the brick and then colored blue. So uh, I don't know the date of this, but I'm guessing it's from the late 70s, early 80s. And I would love to find some, be able to go to the store and buy something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't want to spell stuff with like Right, exactly. Everybody does. I do. <laughs> so that's a, that's a really neat thing. And I didn't even know we had that when we were we said hey let's do a video on rare uh, kits I went in our um, where a lot we have a lot of old stuff in one case and this was sitting in there with no price tag on it so I don't have a clue what it's worth <laughs> um, probably in the $50 to yeah. $60 ballpark they do that now with Duplo a lot with the kind mm -hmm. of like the letters and stuff on numbers and things yeah. like that but they don't really do it with system that much. No. They they did a lot more back in the day because uh, they had the, like the Modulex mm -hmm. and Modulex was for adult uh, architects. So they actually targeted architects. They sold toolboxes for sorting Modulex. I mean they had a really uh, it wasn't a toy. Yeah. It literally was a tool for building um, architecture design. Yeah, Modulex was this really crazy, much smaller brick product that Lego made. Mm -hmm. We've done a few videos over the years, so if you search the channel Beyond the Brick, you can find out more about it, but it's very, very unique if you haven't seen it before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one here is probably our most expensive rare set that we have here. Uh, I don't know, that Vikings one was about the same price. This is $550. It was a uh, New York Comic Con exclusive. Not the year that I went, obviously, because <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get this. Uh, I went like two, three years in a row, and I never got anything cool like this. Um, 2017, so this okay. was right after I was there. Um, this is the Boba Fett and Han Solo and Carbonite Brickhead. Brickheads are very popular. Uh, no one is more popular than Boba Fett. 
Oh, I actually, since Book of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian all came out, I've not repriced this, but... Um, I would imagine there's a resurgence. It might have interest. gone up in value, I don't know. This was a con exclusive, so it was limited edition. Uh, but what makes this even more rare is the set designer signed the set. And any time you can get a set designer to sign the set, it does make the price go mm -hmm. up. Uh, usually 100 to 150 dollars more than uh, the original price, even though their autograph isn't worth that much. <laughs> but put it on the set that they that they designed, and it makes it very special. Mm -hmm. so. It connects that, yeah, the idea of yeah. the person who came up with this idea and designed it signed it as well. Yeah, which I don't, I don't know who it, who that is. Or what I'm not, says, yeah, I'm not but, sure either, but. One of the, uh, one, is that Jens? I think that might be the last name, but there's, I believe, mm -hmm. multiple designers with that name at Lego, so I'm not entirely sure which one this was. Yeah. It almost <laughs> looks like a Marcos or Larco, Carlos, uh, something like that. Um, we knew at one time. <laughs> it's been lost to history. Yeah. We'll have to Google it. All right. Um, We're getting more exciting oh, here, better and better. Okay, so this, there's three of these sets, and these, I guess you could say these are the rarest sets because uh, there's only one of them in existence. So this is one of one, this is one of one, and this is one of one. This <laughs> is a picture printed on Lego bricks at Legoland, so it was by Lego, right? Of me, Mark, Steven, and Ed, Ed's my business partner, at Legoland, Florida, riding the uh, Lego race. The great the, Lego race. The great R Lego race roller coaster. <laughs> and Ed, Mark, Steven, and I have all signed the outside of the box. And we, I love this. I, I just think it is so cool. We had a wonderful trip there. Um, I did this 10 years ago with my kids. And I just, I've always loved the picture because it's printed on Lego bricks. Mm -hmm. And I still have it. It's on display at my house. So we went ahead and did this at every single park. <laughs> <That shows. laughs> it's, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> we did that at every single uh, roller coaster that we rode. I think there's four there, and we only rode. Uh, that was the first one. Ed and I were vid this was the first roller coaster ride Mark and Steven had ever been on. We were there looking at their model, the Warden of the Woods, yeah. the one Lego Masters. And uh, this was their first ride that they had ever been on. And we, Ed and I both wanted the video, their reaction to it. And um, Ed and I ended up getting the cameras in our face. <laughs> yeah, so so we this one is worth maybe a little less because you can't quite see the faces. Or stuff. maybe it's worth more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see them. <laughs> and we figured what we would do is, uh, you know, we would keep them in their boxes and we wanted to display them in the store. But we thought, hey, somebody's going to ask how much these are. Let's put a price on it. <laughs> you know, we want people to see them. We want to see them. We want to display them. There's no better spot to display them than in our store in one of the glass cases. So we're going to stick a price on those. Uh, they're one of one. There you go. It's pretty rare, rare pieces. I just imagine the kids around you on that, <laughs> the four of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and then the rarest kit that we have here at the store. <clears throat> what makes this so rare is that it's Ed's build a potty building kit, and we only sell it. You know, when Lego makes a kit, they make I don't know how much, they, how many Thousands they make. and thousands of them. I would, you know, p potentially hundreds of thousands of kits, whereas we only made 200 of Ed's Build-A-Potty. We might make more, but... <laughs> but don't, don't say that. To start, that <laughs> we only made 200. It has exclusive stickers with Ed's face on it, and uh, Ed is such a rare character that, uh, you know, you could almost just buy this for the box art. Oh, yes, of course. And this is a shameless plug. This is on our website for sale for $14.99. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about rare things here. It's only sold at Atlanta Brick Cow. It, yeah, it's rare, right? <laughs> it's rare. So, uh, you know, I was just showing you guys that, and, you know, before we did the video, and as a joke, you know, we're just kind of... It's fantastic. It, what, is, it is a really good What kit. Lego room is not complete without one of these on display? We, we were getting uh, the last convention I did before this weekend was Brickworld Indie, 
and I had like two or three people ask for porta potty kits. And I was like, no, but it would be so easy. <laughs> and who better than to sell a porta potty than, than my business partner, who's a wonderful guy, Ed. It's funny how you're not in that one, you know? Oh, I don't. Him. No, I don't. <laughs> just, <laughs> Ed's the businessman. <laughs> I just like Lego a lot. <laughs> So that, that completes the list, I think, for us yeah. then. But it's so fascinating uh, to come in here and see these rare sets, things like, like Dacta or that mm -hmm. Panama Canal, uh, the Viking set, you know, signed mm. sets by designers, all sorts of crazy stuff like that that you guys have coming through here. And that's what you have right now. Mm -hmm. Whenever viewers of this video come in, you'll probably have other rare things that maybe weren't in this video. Speaking of which, you know, we were just talking about the autographed set. Uh, we had somebody bring in a set the other day that was a Lego movie, the first Lego movie set. Um, it was one of the mech sets, and it, it was like the only set that didn't have Emmett in it. Okay. And it was autographed by Chris Pratt. And I was no paperwork, just a set. It was sealed, and it was autographed. And those Lego movie sets aren't really, they haven't appreciated a value much, so it wasn't that expensive. Um, it was might have been a fifty dollar set, so I go on. I'm, I'm like, how do I even price this? Mm -hmm. I want it, but how do I price it? And I mean, Chris Pratt was in the movie, but he wasn't in that set. Emmett wasn't in the set, so uh, I went on eBay. I looked up Chris Pratt's autograph. You can get it for fifteen to twenty dollars, so you would apply that premium to that set, right? If it was a good set with Chris Pratt in it it would increase it more. Right. If it's a set without a minute. Like, if you were to autograph this set, <laughs> it would... Why? Right. It doesn't you quite know? have the same appeal as the designer. So, Chris <laughs> Chris Pratt was in the movie, but he wasn't in that set. Mm -hmm. So, it just kind of... It, some of these things you you really need to think about and, you know, in order to value it. You know, does it increase the value? Does it decrease the value if you have some random person sign it? Um, in of course, Chris Pratt could sign anything and it's going to be worth more money, right? Um, so uh, that value was like 75 bucks. So I, I said, oh, well, probably adds 25 bucks to that set. Other sets might be more expensive. But they didn't like it. They thought it was worth thousands of dollars and they didn't trade it in. But I was disappointed. I wanted the set, but it just wasn't worth it. It was just a regular Lego set. There you go. So the question is, uh, if you come into Atlanta Brickco, would you pay more or less for a set with my signature on it in the store? Because we can make that happen. Hey, hey, hey. Can we get, can we get you to sign this set? Does this go up in value if I sign it? I don't know. <laughs> These and are so valuable to begin with. I'm not sure. We will have this display with uh, <laughs> your signature on it by our Lego uh, Legoland Florida sets. There you go. Run. Yes, the most right. rarest exclusive things. <laughs> well, thank you, Chris. This is fantastic. Yep. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and taking us through the sets here. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I know the viewers do as well. Make sure, if you're watching this, come on in and check out some of the crazy rare stuff that you can find at Atlanta Brickco. Thank you. Thanks.